Okay, so it's the start of October, which means we uh, have just, or are in the process of releasing release six for Darklang. Um, yeah, what, what, what was ended on your end? Uh, just tuples in a bunch of editor things that were pretty much in the way of getting tuples out. Refactorings and stuff. Yeah, just like, oh, I'm working on this thing. This part of the editor is broken. Got to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I'm actually of the feeling overall that like those refactorings, like I, I, I feel that we've done a lot of, of refactorings over like over the summer and obviously over the last two years with the rewrite. But I'm starting to feel that like the um, we're, we're in the payoff period of a bunch of those investments. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And they're becoming, we're, we're at the point where like the, the code overall is becoming better to a point where doing additional refactoring so you can kind of leverage the, the previous ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had, I had the same um, sort of month. Like there was an awful lot of very small um, uh, editor changes and there, there was like 30 or 50 of them. Um, but a great number of them were very easy to do and were very fast. There was only like, obviously the majority of the time were spec level ones that were hard, um, but most of the changes were not hard. Yeah, I, I forget. I feel like I feel like all might have been, I don't know, medium-ish. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's not knowing the, uh, not knowing fluid code as much. Maybe it's just been n more neglected parts of things. Well, also even working on patterns and patterns were, were definitely the neglected, um, the neglected part of the editor. Like I, I think, I think expressions was, there was really first class support for expressions and there's maybe only third class support for patterns. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's certainly true. And there's a lot of code that, for example, reconstruction, like the, the thing that happens when you copy and paste code, um, that was like, there was a really good solution for expressions mm -hmm. and a like hacky, sometimes works solution for, for patterns. And mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. I mean, most of the language is expressions and, and these patterns, I'll, I'll, I'll try to call them match patterns from now on. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they're only useful in match expressions, so it, yeah. it makes sense. But well, I, th I think that we're going to have to start adding more and more things that aren't expressions. So the one that has been on my mind recently is is pipe uh, pipes. So like you can pipe into an expression, and it's like a first class expression, except lots of things don't work. Like if you put the wrong thing in there, you you get the wrong. Uh, you get the wrong result, and then there's a hack around this sort of e-pipe target, um, and it's it's just like a little bit of a mess. And so we actually, you know, as well as needing patterns, and I think in the future you're working on, on let patterns, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think we also need like pipe expressions, and then I wouldn't be surprised if there are other things like this where where we need a new concept. Yeah, so we have. A number of different so so I, I guess it's kind of like things being teased out of expressions. Do mm -hmm. do you including the pipes which are currently kind of in that expression bubble? Mm -hmm. Um there are some other fake fake expression things. I, I don't have them offhand. Do you imagine those being pulled out as well? Um other fake expression things. I mean most of them are fake values, so like incompletes and, and errors and, and things. Right. Um Partials are the weird one, but I think I, I'm not seeing a major problem with, with partials as they stand. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say partials have been great. Like, it's not a pain point. The yeah. only thing, the only pain is just not having partials for patterns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I think not having them for integers and floats as well. Hmm, for integers. Yeah, so I, I guess to like catch anyone up who's listening, so patterns are like you're 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 typing like a constructor like a like error in a result and you're you're halfway well, through typing in it. A, in a uh, pattern matching in a match statement. Pattern matching in a match. Yeah. Right, pa patterns are part of a match statement where you're 
don't know. Sorry, mm-hmm. maybe that was implicit. Yeah, w- whatever. Um, the I forgot what I was going. Yeah, so I can imagine what um, partial floats would look like since you're like halfway through. Maybe you're halfway through. You like type the the dot in the float. Uh, what does a partial integer look like? So, well, it's not so much a partial integer. It's what happens if you press something that's not a valid integer in between. So I think actually float, you know, you know, mm. let's, let's say you're typing 1.0, that's totally fine, right? But the, the point can be, can be a float and you haven't added the, the thing yet, but we know what you're doing. Um, but specifically what I'm talking about is the ch- so we, 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 we do some minor parsing of partials. So a partial is just a string that isn't something yet, and it, it evaluates to its old thing. So for example, when, when you edit a function call, you backspace the name, it still evaluates to its old thing until you have a new function for it. Um, and what I started doing recently, uh, and we, we've done some of it before, but. Uh, started parsing the partial. So if you have a quote at the start and the end of a partial, that, that, that's a string, right? Let's, let's convert that to an actual string. If you backspace some stuff, let's, let's say you have the string V2 and you backspace V, you now have the number two, and so now we parse that as well. It's like two. All right, what happens if that was a mistake and now you press V? Well, if you type V in an integer, it, throw, it, it throws the key press away. It just won't let you do it. Uh, and so that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about that you maybe, um, you know, just deleted a bunch of stuff and you would like to go to the new stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. In fact, maybe even, um, maybe we should allow empty partials instead of, instead of converting it to a blank. That's interesting. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to keep that thought in mind while also having the, the idea that you know, let, let's say you're in that circumstance where you have like one, two, three, you accidentally type a V in the middle of it. You just like a mm-hmm. typo something, you delete it. And in your mind, you just want it to be one, two, three again, right? You want it to be an integer again. Yeah. Um, well, that, I think that, that, that already works. Behavior is, and, and how does that work? Does that work immediately or is that when you like leave that token? That, that works immediately. As soon as you delete that V and you have one, two, three, you have an integer. Okay. Which, now that I think about it, I, I hadn't thought about like what happens if you delete a partial. Um, suppose that you're editing a, uh, suppose that you're editing a function call, right? You, you, you want to change from uh, option dot map to, to um, result dot find to, let's say, right? So, so you highlight all of it, you delete it, and then you start to type results. Um, I wonder if we just deleted the arguments. Like if the conversion to two, it probably tossed away the arguments. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I think we'd have to have, I'm not sure what the control would look like to, it, it'd kind of be like a refactor to do anything yeah. better than that. Well, I, I think, I think it sort of points to that where we are now in the editor is really sort of like getting getting like regular usage working um, mm-hmm. and I think a, a bunch of work was like, like I, I, I think we can start to look at the the more edge casey stuff once we have um, the just the regular stuff done and we can start to like look into these other structured editors and how they do things or what they do that that is you know maybe better than what we do um in a sort of like a future thing and you know, probably not at the stage to get bogged down in like amazing editing refactorings yeah yeah we have we have plenty of tiny broken things to to resolve yeah. first. so i guess this was a month of tiny broken things like there's a lot <laughs> yeah. fewer tiny broken things now and a lot fewer obvious ones as well Yeah. Yeah, like one was um, when you go to autocomplete a pattern, like a match mm-hmm. pattern, you're you're in a match and you start to type like 
T for you know either true or some kind of variable pattern that you want to bind to or something like that. There is this like awful flashing that happened yeah. where you just you couldn't select options, certain options. Um, anyway, that was like a really glaringly broken thing for a while. Yeah. Uh, there was there was, was a, a result. Um, a bunch of the broken things that that, that I did this month were um, when j just like when you were moving your cursor through um, through some expressions, it was relatively common to to just get like a spinner instead of uh, a live value. Um, so like if you were doing something in pipes or in some cases with lambdas. Um, uh, some cases with partials as well. Um, when there was literals in the autocomplete, I, I, I forget the others, but like th th there was a bunch of these where like you just saw an infinite spinner. And those used to work, but they, they sort of broke when we changed you know, exactly how the analysis sent back results for or like, you know, exactly what integer or what ID the, the results were sent back for. Mm -hmm. um, and and so like those were just very like obvious broken chips. So if you started using dark, you would run into that probably on your first use and then you would conclude, you know, this shit is amateur error. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I, 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 I think like the next major milestone for dark uh, is feeling like this shit isn't amateur error anymore. Yeah, it's, it's definitely closing in on that. Um, mm. But... Yeah, I'm trying to think what what are the other glaringly what what are the remaining like big ticket editor is messed up here kind of things. Um, I I think the autocomplete is is extremely cluttered. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, for like packages and such. Yeah, and I think so. My, my, the, the the fix I have for that, or I haven't started working on it, but no, that's not true. The refactoring of the sidebar, we're starting to work on it. Um. So I think we won't show packages by default. Um, and we, uh, like in the autocomplete, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a little uh, toggle. So if you want to add the strike functions, you can. Or whatever, and then it'll be in the autocomplete if you toggle it. Yeah. Um, and then probably any package that you uh, you know, some sort of like import thing. So if you like type the word stripe and you're like, where's the stripe thing? And then it can be like import stripe and it just like turns the toggle, that, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm trying to think, hmm. I, I guess eventually when you're, so it, would that be import per canvas or what would that be import per? Uh, I think that would be import per user's autocomplete. So I, I think it's an editor setting. Okay. Um, and then you'll automatically, like anytime you're in a handler or something like that, um, you know, you'll automatically have the module for like the types you're using or something like that. Um, but I, I, th I think it's important that we don't have something that, that's equivalent to import statements or open statements. Like we, we have, we don't want to be doing any dynamic resolution of function names. Hmm. Um, and so, so in, in, you know, other languages, you have something like, like an import at the start of the thing. And that's so that you don't have to fully qualify the name every time, but we fully qualify the name every time. And we take the hit in the, you know, by having an autocomplete rather than like making the, um, making the language work differently and, and having like a, re a, a name resolution algorithm. So yeah. I, want, I want to avoid having some sort of import. I would agree with that. Yeah, I, th I think uh, along with the kind of taking the hit and dealing with autocomplete, there's going to be some interesting challenges in, uh, in, in ranking the autocomplete suggestions that come up, for example. Yeah. Like if I haven't, if I've used, if I've kind of like opted into Stripe package generally yeah. but i haven't used it within this canvas or you know this handler or whatnot to, to yeah. kind of deprioritize that so that's going to be that's going to be interesting um hmm. yeah yeah and I, I i think i think we can do we can do better than 
Like I, I, I think if it's the name of a package, we can you know offer a little option at the bottom that's like, you know, open whatever, and then if you, I don't know, if you press right on it, like if you press enter on it, it will automatically like it'll continue rather than replace itself. I, I think I think there's options there where where we don't mm. just like put everything in. Anyhow, um, so you're asking like what what are the big ticket items? So I think. Um, like documentation in the editor. So I want you to, you know, in the autocomplete, I want you to see, uh, sorry, in the in the live values, I want you to see like a type and then be able to click on on the int type and then get a get a thing that says, oh, here's what the int type is. Um, with, you know, in the future, everything from like, you know, just the initial documentation string to like very detailed examples of like what happens with overflow um, to editor bindings to discussion from users like that, that's sort of like the long distance but I'd like to have an initial uh, documentation thing so that users using something for the first time will will be able to get you know what, what, what is this what is this like backslash what, what, what does a backslash do why is it here um, and you you can easily see that a backslash is a lambda, um, and here's how a lambda works, and here's how you use it, that that kind of thing. Mm. So, so your cursor is on a your carrot's on a one of those tokens, like the bash slash token, and yeah. I guess above in the in the dialog box there, you see not dialog box, but the uh, the, the box above, you, you you see the context there. Yeah. Um, I ha I was more thinking like in a sidebar on the right that you can have like a a beginner sidebar um, mm -hmm. or like a, you know, a detail sidebar, a doc sidebar, something like that, um, where, where we just teach you dark, not, not so much teach you dark, but like, um, I, 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 th I think that okay. people get lost with what things are. Um, and it's very difficult to, to, use dark and constantly like have to you know refer back to documentation or, or, or something like that it's kind of annoying and i think that for first-time users um or you know beginners to dark in existing canvases or, or, or that sort of thing um it should be that almost everything in dark is extremely discoverable um from a documentation perspective so the first thing is just like adding little, little mouse over things, um, little, little tool tips, like what is a HTTP handler? What is a cron? How does it work? Um, and mm -hmm. then going all the way to like, you know, here, here, here's this type. Here's, you know, here's a bunch of like user commentary. Did you, did you ever use PHP? Uh, not much, just like for includes and headers and that kind of thing. Uh, one thing that was great about PHP, one of the few things that was great about PHP, um, was uh, they had a documentation website. It was like php.net. And if, if you went to like php.net slash string underscore trim right, or whatever the function name was, um, mm -hmm. that would give you the documentation. And then the documentation would have hundreds of comments uh, from like people asking questions, people posting um, code snippets, um, discussing how to use it, where you would use it, what else you, so it's like, you know, this was in a pre stack overflow time. Um, but kind of a lot of the things that, that later went on stack overflow, um, were, or, or maybe later went on, on GitHub issues or something like that. were all, uh, in this like comment section, uh, on php.net. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean that's that's very much like what we're shooting for, but a yeah. long time ago. Um, yeah. I'm I'm trying to imagine that within Dark's UI and the sidebar and whatnot. It's not it's not grokking there, but curious to see a vision there. Um, yeah. So n not in the current sidebar. Well, like another sidebar on yeah. the right. Um, and part part of the reason I wanted that existing sidebar to always be small, apart from the fact that the that the expanded one was a mess and didn't really work is to sort of give more space for 
documentation. Like I, I didn't want, I didn't want to just start looking like an IDE. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you learn those like eight buttons, it shouldn't take up more real estate than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, what else is needed for the editor to not feel amateurish? Um, I think probably the other major thing is like string team. Just making string editing not like janky, you mean? Uh, you know, supporting escaping multi-line strings. Oh, yeah. Like multi-line strings are a real mess. Yes. Um, interpolation? I, 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 think, I think that dark without interpolation doesn't feel like I, I don't think interpolation is a thing that 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 makes it feel amateur i think it is definitely a missing feature mm -hmm. uh, and an important missing feature but i don't think it's it's amateur without it what about regex do you, mm. i i i feel like there yeah, are a number of things that are dependent on it that are it, it, it doesn't feel full to me without regex or, or something. I, I don't know. I feel like dark can do something interesting with regex and it also feels missing. So it's mm. kind of like a two for one. I mean, I, I guess the place that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to differentiate is between like what's amateur and what's incomplete. Right. Okay. Um, and so one of the things I'm working on at the moment is a new homepage. And the reason being the current homepage looks amateur. And I want to tell a different narrative. I want. I don't want to tell the narrative of like dark is the best at X and Y. I want to tell the narrative of like dark is a project that's doing things differently, and you might really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and and being a work in progress, you can expect that there's no regex. But it's it's. I, I think we give a different impression when someone comes in, even with that narrative, and and just finds like bugs everywhere in the editor. Yeah, it's it's better to have fewer things that are unbroken than yeah, fill in regex and such just for the sake yeah. of filling them in. And we we were going in the other direction, like we were going with uh, people will put up with shit if it if it's really good, um, and and I just don't think that's true in in the year twenty twenty two. I think people will put up with stuff if it's really polished and seems, um, uh, but but is like, you know, sol solves a real thing and is really polished, as opposed to has more features and is unpolished. Yeah. Because um, you can certainly work within. Polished. Yeah, and you can you can certainly work within the constraints, of of yeah. dark, yeah. largely. I mean, all other languages do, right? Yeah. Yeah, like we we have, you know, the, this weird dict thing instead of records, and there's no subtypes, and it's like, well, actually, that's most languages, or most modern, but certainly it's Python and and it's uh, JavaScript are the two most popular languages. Do you? I I think that's true. I also suspect that a lot of people that dark is traditionally recruited have been in languages that do have those things um do you, do you think that's true like have 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 you seen a large user base come from non statically type functional languages where they they, they don't have to use or and such like like you know python I, javascript i think we we get attention from those communities but not users hmm like, I think they're more than happy to, to talk about, like, oh, Dark is written in OCaml or F-sharp, and it's sort of, you know, OCaml or F-sharp itself. Um, but I think most of our actual users, um, their main other language is JavaScript. Hmm. And for I, I, doing I certainly front-end work. For do, yes, yes. I think that their main other thing is that they're doing... Well, actually, I'll, I'll split that in two. I think there's, there's people who don't want to do backend because they don't know backend, and there's people who don't want to do backend because they do know backend. <laughs> um, 
and I think the people who only know JavaScript is sort of in that, that first group, obviously. Um, but I, I think that those are our main user groups. I don't think that um, diehard functional programmers are really in our in our users at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mostly because it currently is not a great functional <laughs> programming language. Yeah. It just kind of looks at it if you squint a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, p people, people aren't looking for... P people who have found a really nice functional programming language that they like and believe in aren't looking for a new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anything, we've seen people try to use Dark within their existing existing kind of like ecosystem. Like, uh, like how do I use Dark on .NET or something like that? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all those but, kind yeah, of that, things. That, that's not what this does. Right. Um, yeah, so like I, I kind of think my, you know, kind of like my thinking forward view is... Um, Last month we discussed like um, building dark in dark, and I, I think that's uh, the the reason for building dark in dark. I think is is you know give a better first use experience and, and just get rid of that sort of like shittiness uh, that's there. Um, and I think my main thing after that will be looking at that sort of first use experience. Um, and. Uh, including like you know, a little more holistically like how does how does someone join in how do they like what docs do they experience how do how do they sign up what does the home page say where where are the logos you know that that, that sort of thing um yeah with with a sort of a you know looking longer term of you know we need to not run out of money right uh, so what, what what do we actually need to not run out of money well you know, we need to have users coming in, um, and we need to charge money for the service. Yeah. And we need to, I guess, have certain things, e either have people who are willing to charge kind of as is, or get to a point where it's like super usable, for example, like packages to a mm -hmm. point where yeah. people like really want to, to use it more. And... Yeah, I mean, we, without doubt, we won't, we won't grow aggressively without packages. I think that that's just a no brainer. Um, so to get packages done, in my mind, we need to well, my initial thought was we need to like expand the language so that people aren't passing, so that people aren't using dicts in it. They're using records properly. Mm -hmm. um, although it occurred to me recently that like eh, maybe maybe that's not what we need. Maybe, maybe, maybe we actually just need to like, you know, get the new HTTP client out that uses bytes, and you know, we can kind of like go from there. Like, I guess relevant to that, when we, we've had we've had a separate discussion around um, the ability to to fix to fix people's code and to mm. uh, like like migrate from bad language features to good language features. Um, so like there is an idea of like oh well maybe we kind of semi discourage people from creating too much dark code by um, you know. And yeah. not half packages for a little bit until that's ready. But then there is also this other conversation of, oh well, we can also you know just fix their code. Um, yeah. It, it, so are, you, are you thinking more about that latter, and that's why your thoughts have adjusted a little bit? Yeah, the, the, the sort of like what code can we realistically fix? Um, and uh, I mean, actually, now, now that I think about it, like the. Um, we 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 really can't fix um, code 
that uses dictionaries instead of records. It is like just a bit, that, that, that is a very hard fix. But because it's a hard fix, the plan is to leave it in place, like to, to leave dicts in place and then to add type checking in the editor, um, which will discourage you to use the, the records and not the dicts. Um, and so that's actually not a terrible thing to have in packages. You know? Yeah. As long as we have some way for packages to migrate to a point where they're no longer using those features. Uh, I guess if they're in packages, they're hidden, right? Because you're mean, not really the, exposing. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 they have an interface, but like we won't be able to change the semantics of any function in a package. Mm -hmm. Like we made a very small number of changes to um, to the standard library functions when we, or the to the semantics when we switched to F sharp, and you know each one of them was like very carefully considered, and it just it wasn't good to do it. So if we have like hundreds, thousands of, of package manager yeah. functions, like you know we certainly can't do it on a broad basis if there's any change at all. Yeah. So so it's more that the packages and the individual handlers and functions within it yeah. need to be bound to specific language and interpreter versions is is that i mean i i don't see us i i i don't super see us doing language versions um yeah i'm, I'm not sure that we'll end up doing language versions or at least um, like I, I, I think that we will end up versioning features and deprecating features. And, and that reflects within what the interpreter? Yes. Okay. So, so to then, give, then yeah, to what, give what you what an I obvious said, example yeah. here, um, if you, if you have field access, right at the moment that works on dicts and not, and not records, um, and it returns null if it doesn't find the thing. And returning null is ridiculous from the perspective of a, well, from the perspective of either dict or uh, object uh, mm -hmm. records, I mean. Um, so what we would do is we would add a new field access, you know, e new field access. Um, keep the semantics of the old one. And then whenever you press dot on the keyboard, in the future, you get the new one. Yeah. And the old one is in the editor, visualized. Maybe eventually, it's visualized as something differently, else. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Certainly, eventually, something else. Maybe in the short term, they look the same. I, I, I don't know. We, we haven't tried it. Yeah. Um, but that, that's a whole lot. Like, I've also done the thought experiment of like, how do we have two languages? And you get, you get into a really complicated bit with, with language versioning as to where the boundaries of the language version. So is it a function call? So like, is this function, what language is this function in? Can you call a version one function from version two? Vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, there's difficult questions there. Do we certify that things work in both versions? You know? Yeah, I, I guess the only guarantees are like, does this code use these deprecated features? And there's like a dependency of is not using XYZ deprecated features. Yeah. Rather yeah, than it's... version constraints. Yeah. So I'm imagining, for example, like ifs are, they, they don't uh, short circuit. So I'm imagining like a, instead of right now where it, where it prints out the word if, I'm imagining where it says like, if does not short circuit, like like a, you know what I mean, like a blob of, of something, or I, I'm not sure how that would visualize. But well, it's not ifs that don't short circuit. It's um, it's ampersand, or it's, it's oh, double right, lines right. And, and double pipes. But right. the, the, I mean the, that will purely be an additive change. There will still be 
bool, colon, colon, and function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll see when, I mean, I mean, we, yeah, we still have a little bit until those HTTP client HTTP handlers are updated to a point where it unblocks the static assets. And I think at that point, we'll probably know better about, mm -hmm. like, are we comfortable with, with proceeding with packages or not? Yeah. Um, Cause that's, you know, that's probably at least a month out to, to start thinking about that. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, my, my current new thinking is that Perhaps if we restrict packages, it wouldn't be the worst thing to ship them. Hmm. Um, but I think one of the restrictions, one of the better restrictions would be to only allow um, the new HTTP client. Okay. That's interesting. Why? Because we don't want to promote the old HTTP client. So do you see the old HTTP client being deprecated generally? Um, I see the old HTTP client being deprecated when we have a new HTTP client that does the same thing built on yeah on the the, the base. new base is yeah the base what we called it uh yeah either base or basic I like base more yeah so we'll we'll have a regular thing that has, I don't know, a middleware uh, built on top of base. Um, and that, that feels, uh, it feels like if people use that, that, that will be fine. Yeah, I guess, I guess that makes sense. Like packages just aren't allowed to use deprecated things, just like you're not able to use deprecated things generally. And so by following that system, uh, you know, w once we feel comfortable exposing a certain number of things or deprecating a certain number of things before allowing packages, that'll kind of put sure, us in a good position. Won't everything be deprecated all the time? <laughs> Who was that? Like deprecation is is nested or is um, transitive, I suppose. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's not. Right. If you have a function that uses a deprecated function. Sure, you'd like to you'd like to move it to a new version that doesn't use the deprecated function, but maybe you haven't yet, and that doesn't make your function deprecated. Yeah, I mean, as long as the the binding, the the shape of how you work with the with the function doesn't mm -hmm. use something that's deprecated, yeah. I, I guess it doesn't matter. So the what what would be the things that you know, would it be eventually deprecated that could be exposed via a package? So like maybe records and dictionaries, um, mm -hmm. but that's still yeah, even my, a maybe. Yeah, I, I, you, 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 oh, I, I get what you're saying. I, I think we're, we're talking about each other. Like the input uh, I was talking types. about. I was talking about deprecated functions. You're actually talking about like deprecated language features. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Like we, we wouldn't want to encourage the use of, of deprecated language features because uh, and, and maybe that is a transitive thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe like, you know, certain functions can't be used in future function calls, at least going into the package manager, because um, there's like some transitive uh, uh, language deprecation that we're trying to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the deprecated thing is, is going to be hard. Like, I, I, I had thought that, like, you know, one of the things that's going to be great is that there'll never be a, a Python 2 to 3 thing, right? Um, we'll just get to update. But what I hadn't realized is that what those language versions get to do is, like, when Python moves to Python 3, they can forget about Python. Yeah, they can they can drop things. We we just have a bunch of tiny Python two to three problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So who who knows if we'll if we'll figure that out? Like it, it may be that. Like I, I remember Circle was it had like a an old pricing scheme that it took four years to get rid of. Hmm. Um, 
so like you know understanding that there's a lot of users who don't log in right um, like who, who, who created something and will never log in again uh, what do we do with their code yeah uh, their code that's using deprecated features and maybe we force the deprecation unless you log in and click this button maybe, maybe, maybe that's what we do but you know we don't want to be in the business of breaking people's code so like you know, we, we, we might have to know about whether this is used, about whether it's accessible. Like, certainly we, we have the ability to gather all this information, but like, we're gonna have to be very careful about what we, what we do around this. We may discover that we're just never able to do it. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels to me like we're always gonna have some of these deprecated things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so That's tough. Any, anyway, um, Anything else? Anything else this month that uh, that was interesting? Uh, just tuples and fluid. Um, let me think here. Yeah, Autocomplete. I think that's all I did as well. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, 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 I have a nice one actually. Uh, we now yeah. explain why functions are deprecated. Oh yeah, that's nice. We've we've had that metadata, and now we yeah. actually expose it. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with that one. It's, Sort of like it's one of those things that uh, um, that I imagined like two years ago when I was when I was rewriting the, the thing, um, and now it is finally in the UI. <laughs> I'm actually gonna I'm gonna elevate that to a major feature. Nice. Yeah, that that is actually really nice. We've had those kind of not doc strings, but basically doc strings just sitting in the F sharp code. Yeah. For for ages. Yeah. Uh, and we went through a lot of efforts to create them. So, yeah. Um, what else is? Um, are there any other things like that, like that metadata that still needs to be exposed? Uh, types. Types are mm. uh, nested. Types aren't displayed. So you will show you result or list instead of list event or whatever. Right. And that's true. And like user type. Yeah, that's true all yeah. over the place. Um, the what, when are we releasing tuples? <laughs> Good question. Uh, we have a few things left. So I like, I the 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 one blocker for me is let deconstruction. Um, I like as a user of tuples, I don't want tuples to exist until you can let uh, and then deconstruct it and then yeah. equals your tuple thing. Like that's the big blocker for me. Um, and well, I what, think what that's. About... What about function parameters? I think it's important, but it's not like mm -hmm. as damning to me. Okay. I and guess similarly, like DB function. types aren't as important. Because yeah. like, I, I generally don't like to have tuples as like return types of functions and as params. There are like very few cases like... Um, yeah, there, there are very few cases where I like tuples across the wire. Uh, I think well, they're just kind of like, I, I know that's like a, a thing that's a lot of people don't agree with. It's just like how, how I like it. Like tuples feel like this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't bother to create a real type for this. So I used a tuple. That That's how I use tuples. Yeah. yeah. And, and locally, that's totally permissible. And I, I agree with it. But otherwise, they seem like this opaque Oh, like I, I wanted one of these and one of these, mm. and I got too lazy to create a type. Well, it's funny because the, the place that, that I would use them in function parameters is actually as like an alias, um, which means that you don't actually need tuple definitions. Like I, I would have, you know, another type, which is opaque to the user, and it, you know, it's just called T or whatever. You know, let's call it, uh, you know, result. Um, like the, the, the result of a game or a computation or something like that. What is the result? Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be anything. Who knows, right? We, we, we just have this, this result type. Um, uh, what's it called? Like a computed result or something. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe just through the computed result, it may, maybe it's three things. You threw it into a tuple. Um, but the actual type that you would use there is not a tuple type. The, the type that you, like you wouldn't define it using a tuple type. You would define it as an alias, and it might just happen to be tuple, which works fine just now. Hmm. 
Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, uh, I yeah. in in all ca- I don't know in in all cases where I, I would I would reach for that I'd probably just rather create a record type and 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 expose that to the user of, of sure, whatever sure. I'm defining. But. Well, so re- regardless, what what I'm saying is that the like our tuple is completely broken if we can't uh, define a tuple. Uh, sorry, a parameter to a function that uses a tuple. Like a parameter type, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Same with the I would agree with that. Yeah. Like, certainly we should add it, you know, shortly afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's important. Um, but I, I I I um I'm really happy to be working on these tuples because they've been like forced me to unbreak other things like just yeah. pattern stuff throughout the code. But I yeah. also am itching to to get out of tuples at some point. Um, well, maybe one of the reasons I'm mentioning this is that I want to get rid of non-fluid uh, parameters and such. So perhaps that's like my hidden motivation here. Non-fluid parameters. I don't know what that means. So parameter definitions currently don't use the fluid editor. Oh, that, yep. Function definitions, handlers, none of that uses the fluid editor. And I would like... Primarily, I'd like to just delete all that old like blank or code, mm-hmm. um, and that means extending the fluid editor to more to more places, and so that's that's my not so subtle motivation for expanding tuples to um, to function params or to data stores. Um, like, I don't think we should write nested type definitions in. Um, uh, in the blank or thing because it's going to be deprecated. Yeah, let's going, let's not bother. Removed. Yeah, let's not yeah. bother writing any more non-fluid editor. Um, yeah. So so that stuff. that that's what I want there, and it's you know pr- primarily it's a like it's a code debt thing. It's like can we remove these thousands of of lines that do things differently in a shitty way? Where where we have to like think about the interaction between them. Where we can't add features because we, yeah, you know, because they, they work in this old shitty way. Hmm. You're like I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, excited by that. No, my I, my my brain is tracing through, um, I- imagining these these other things being pulled into fluid, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that that that's going to take some processing. I, I've I've gone through this before. I just keep forgetting that that's a, that's an intention. Yeah. Um. I I am not particularly interested in that right now. But <laughs> but, but maybe maybe I could be talked into it. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, I mean the big blocker for tuples for me is that let deconstruction, and for that mm-hmm. I'm like rebranding patterns as match patterns so that we can have let patterns and they're not confusing. Yeah. And then, and then once that's out. There's really not much. The other thing that's like maybe a blocker for me is right now when you create a lambda from a list of tuples, uh-huh. like let's say you do like a, you know, okay. you're creating like a list map from a from a list of tuples. It, it'd be nice for the the lambda uh, variable to also sh- like be able to decompose into a tuple, but that's not really a blocker because oh, you oh, could yeah, yeah. you could decompose it within the lambda. No, you're right. Um, I mean, th- those should be let patterns, right? Either let patterns or lambda patterns, if that's a thing. Um, I think let patterns probably could work in that space, but right. that, that might have been. Yeah. It, it might make sense as a separate thing. I don't know. Um, um, the only other let pattern I can think of, uh, perhaps this is uh, like let patterns have to be have to be complete. Yes, uh, ex- exhaustive. I think would be the word. Um, yeah. So the only other thing that's exhaustive is um, constructors with one with only one type. Is that right? Constructors with only one type. With only one. Uh, type. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess so. I'm. Tr- so like result pattern would not work because there are two yeah. types. But it. Well, in in hmm. Haskell they they allow them, right? That's those are. You can have multiple function definitions. 
of mm. the same function with different patterns in them, which I actually kind of like. Um, I don't think we do it in dark, but I, I, I think it's a, it's a nice sort of like um, way of defining things. There's a, um, th this is an aside, but something that came to my mind the other day is the, uh, the, the term constructor pattern mm -hmm. is, is confusing to me. There is a better term for it that I saw the other day, identifier pattern. Um, mm -hmm. it, that, that jives much better with me. Cause like constructor oh. is like, I feel like I'm constructing, yeah, like yeah, it feels yeah. very OOP kind of word, but anyway, that, that's, yeah. that's an aside. Uh, um, yeah. The word yeah, that so I, the word that I intended to use for it was enum. But it, it can also be good for, uh, yeah, I mean, enum, enum would work. Um, that, enum. That's also what Rust and Swift use. Yeah, I, I like that better. Kind of the, the hip languages that you use sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should just, like, maybe we should just start using enums everywhere. Like, enums and records, I think, are the, are the right names for things. Yeah. And... I'm probably happy with dicts rather than maps, even though it's technically a map. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an immutable dict. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I can't think of any other like exhaustive patterns that would work well within either a lambda or a or a let. Um, those seem like it, because even yeah. a head tail assumes you have one thing. Like a like a list head tail pattern assumes you have. That. Yes. Well, of yes, course, that's right. wild card, but wild card is basically an is a um, is a variable pattern. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I think we should call that here. I don't think I don't think there's much to discuss. And we're we're coming up to yeah. an hour. Cool. Oh, all that's right, nice folks. Time. We'll see you. Uh, see you next month. Yep. See you.